Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Shelley Kerr can't wait to get started as Scotland coach. St Mirren looking upwards in the Championship. And Livingston boss David Hopkin is the League One Manager of the Month. Yeah, just a few of the talking points. Alan Ruff and myself, Peter Martin, will be discussing on the programme tonight. As ever, we always like to bring you a special bootroom guest and tonight is no exception. It's the St Mirren midfielder, Stevie Marlin. Stevie, delighted that you are with us. And uh, of course, we're going to be talking about your game from last night uh, in just a moment. Certainly enjoyed it down there at Capelo. It was a, a real heart back to the old days. Can't beat a Renfrewshire derby, Ruffy. And before we talk about it, let's have a look at the uh, morning papers, the main headlines that are going to be worthy of our discussion on the programme as well. The Daily Record uh, had uh, hello and goodbye. This is, of course, um, Michael O'Halloran. It could be in some hot water with Pedro Cachina for failing to turn up to a, a game that he was due to play in for the Rangers youth um, and over and above that it's uh, occupying the back pages of the Sun as well and of course um, there's a, a story there on Richie Foran could be under pressure and the Daily Mail leading with the, the bus explosion which prompted the Borussia Dortmund game against Monaco to be postponed and uh, Mark Bartra was one of the injured players on the bus uh, from the explosion. We'll discuss that uh, and the Champions League games tonight a little later on in the programme. To Capolo, <coughs> uh, the last time I was there it was Morton who came out on top and quite convincingly against St Mirren, albeit in the early stages of uh, Jack Ross's reign, but what a good win last night for you guys. Yeah, it was a really good win. It's something we needed to do was beat Morton um, this season because obviously we got the two draws at home and then we get pretty much like a, a bad defeat for us um, there at 3-1. So last night was just a breath of fresh air with all the boys playing very well and thankfully we got away with the win. Yeah, tell me about the transformation under Jack. It's, it's taken a wee bit of uh, time for him to get, get his message over. Um, I think the clear out we had in the January time, bringing a lot of new faces in, a lot of new boys that have kicked on and helped the team, like uh, like Sir Stephen McGinn, Cammy Smith, uh, Billy at the back, so I think with the players that he wanted to bring in, the squad he wanted to work with, I think it's kind of helped everyone throughout the team and you can see it's kind of brought the confidence back in the squad, like going out and beating Mortons, beating Hibs, beating Dundee United, um, showed that what the team can do and thankfully it's kind of worked and it's took us off the bottom of the table. Well I was just about to say to you Robbie, <coughs> it's um, it's a, a, a false position when you think about the quality that they have available to them. It was a convincing win in very difficult conditions. And of course, with his 100 start, John Sutton, your old mate, does what he does best, scores inside mm -hmm. the penalty box. Yeah, I mean, it, it is fantastic the way they've turned it around. I mean, anybody that's been in football will know that when you're down the bottom of the league, it's not a great place to be. You know, the pressure's on you. Uh, week in, week out, you know, everybody's waiting and you turn in the corner and it, it doesn't help the training either, you know, everybody's coming in on a Monday with their heads down, but certainly they won't be heads down now at St Mirren, St Mirren are, are on, the, on the move and it's everybody else that will be having to go through the pressures that they've been going through for the last two months. Yeah, well right after the game, uh, I first of all asked the Morton boss Jim Duffy if he could explain uh, his side's performance. We played on Saturday against the Hibs, we were top of the league and you know, we gave everything, we worked really hard and we were organised and you know, so tonight we were way off the pace and it was just something that I never, I didn't see coming. You know, the one thing about us and anybody that's seen us is we are a side who work hard, we're organised, uh, we make it difficult for the opposition, but that wasn't the case tonight. It's a man won the game well and won the game comfortably because we don't never get a very good one. Is that the message you'll be giving to them for the weekend, get that edge back then? Oh, we have to get it back. There's no team in this division who's going to hand the game to you. And as I said, every team has their great rovers, I think it's going to be above them. So they have rovers, we play Saturday, they know that they're, they're going to be up for it. So if our players don't realise it's a real challenge on you, then all of a sudden it's up. Always a good thing about interviewing the manager after the game, Ruffy. The, the, the players put rave music on in the background, so you feel as if you're dancing well, you're chatting to him as well. Um, no surprise, Jack Ross in the after-match interview was full of praise for Stephen and his teammates for climbing up the table. It's incredible and that group of players that deserve every bit of credit for it. They now know that they've got a huge amount of work still to do over these last four games, but to put themselves in this position with four games to go from where they were is remarkable. To call that number of points back on 
not just one team but several other teams is it, it, terrific and they feel good about themselves which is, which is a great thing to have in football and I, and I think they can't wait to go against that. Yeah, and I know a manager always likes to highlight it as a team effort but there were a couple of individual performances that you must have played, I mean Marlon's performance. Yeah, Stevie produces those moments of quality that, that, that make up such an asset. We stressed half time importance of him having shots and goal because we had the wind in the second half and to do it so quickly oh, is terrific. There's so many of them responded tonight, younger players particularly as well, Jack Baird in the centre half, you know, to do as well as he did as a young man. Kel McGuinness, 18 years old, has been outstanding all season for me, so it's difficult to, think, to single out players because as a group, even the guys come off the bench and make contributions as a, as a whole squad tonight, they were excellent. So you go again on Saturday? Yeah, we, we um, have another very challenging game on Saturday with Falkirk. Again, really difficult match against a team challenged at the top end of the table, but I don't think teams in the league are particularly all the players at the moment, the forum we're in, um, and, and hopefully their forum performance levels and result will support the ball continues to happen. It's a tough one. I know you might want, not want to commit yourself on this, but of the remaining games, how many points do you think you'll need? I honestly don't look at it, and, and, and that's not avoiding the question. I've never looked at points, I've never ever looked at it. We, we sat as a group in, in, at the end of January and identified targets for us, but it was just about each game at a time and what we needed to do them. And I just think if we continue playing in the manner we are, we'll, be okay. we'll win games, and, and winning games will, will keep us in the league. Yep, uh, a happy man full of praise for you guys um, for what you've achieved so far. There's a wee bit to do, though, just to make sure that you're not involved. Um, Wraith Rovers and S suddenly Air United have those problems, as you can see by the league table, Stevie. Yeah, obviously, we've kind of come into a good run of form, so as the teams around us, Dumbarton especially, and Air United. So it has been difficult to get off that bottom of the table, but like... I think all the boys from what we've done recently we're really looking forward to going playing against Falkirk on Saturday. Um, it's a really good playing surface and all the boys just want to go out and play football and win matches and give the fans something to sing about. Yeah, um, they'll be hoping you win on Saturday. Rafa, your old team, if they can defeat <laughs> Queen of the South, um, will have the title in the bag if St Mirren uh, can defeat Falkirk. Yeah, that's what it's been like in the last two or three weeks of the season. You know, everybody, I would imagine that the teams are coming into the dressing room after the games and the first thing, if they've got three points, is asking around what the other scores are because they've been important top and bottom. Uh, so, yeah, I think everybody will be anxiously again waiting on the results at the, the end of the game. Yeah, sometimes players go on a, a wee on a forum, Ruffy, that can help you no end. Thomas Mickelson's one of them. He got <laughs> Dundee United's winner against Infermon last night. He's He's been uh, on red hot for him with the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he certainly has. I think Dundee United were relying on the boy Murray, you know, coming up with the goals. But he's chipping in as well uh, ever since the final. But, uh, yeah, I think they, everybody knows uh, at the top there how important it is to finish second. I think that's what they'll all be trying to do now. Stevie, who gets your vote for Player of the Year in that division? That is a tough one, but my vote was obviously towards John. Um, after playing alongside him and seeing him kick on the way he has since he's left St Murn, he's won to Hibs and obviously won the Scottish Cup last year, but even this year kicking on and uh, getting on the Scotland squads and stuff and even playing against him, he's been a difficult player to play against, so I think he's been one of the standouts I'd say in the league. It was difficult between him and the boy Tony Andreu for Dundee United, but I think John just tips it. Yeah, John McGinn, is he he's still your mate? I'm still keeping contact with John. Yeah. Stuff is, uh, <laughs> Look at Rob. <laughs> the, re the, reason why I'm saying, the reason why I'm saying that, Stephen, is he's adamant when the voting goes. If, you, if you've got players that you actually don't like or you've had a right scrap with, you go, there's no way I'm voting for him. <laughs> oh, there's, oh, there's my mate. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, there is a bit of that, but the, I mean, sometimes players look at it in the bigger picture and think, listen, if there's a guy who's an absolute standout, you have to vote for him. Uh, it's, I think I would kind of see that it's hard not to vote for John. Um, the things he's done the past couple of seasons, and especially this season with Hibs, um, especially going to, hopefully going to win the league, something I'd like to see him do is win the league with Hibs. So, yeah, it's, it'd be hard not to vote him. And I can't see anybody, um, I, and you know, Peter Houston, we were talking to him last night, thinking about a championship manager of uh, the year, you know, Neil Lennon to get Hibs out of that, that division, which other managers have failed to do, Ruffy, I think he might edge it ahead of mm -hmm. Jim Duffy. Yeah, again, it's the managers who vote for the manager of the year, so every manager will know how difficult it is, whatever club you're at, with the budgets that are there and the players you've got at your disposal. But I think I might agree with you, I think Neil Lennon, uh, taking Hibs up would, would just just beat, just nick everybody because everybody else has had a good season in that league. 
Yep, absolutely. OK, we're going to talk more to Stevie Mallon in the next part of the programme. We'll hear from the uh, new Scotland coach for uh, the women's international side, Shelley Kerr. We'll also look at the Champions League matches as well. Uh, join us after the break, but we thought we'd leave you with a Champions League question. Fantastic final, Paul Lambert man marking Zinedine Zidane in that final, which eventually Borussia Dortmund won by three goals to one, Ruffy. Yeah, it's a memory for the rest of your life to play in that game and to have the medal. Uh, it's amazing any time we get Paul in, he's the first thing he talks about, and, and, and quite rightly so. A fantastic occasion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, Borussia Dortmund in the news uh, for all the wrong reasons this time, Ruffy. Again, um, we're still waiting on details to emerge uh, about the perpetrator of the uh, crime and of course the bombs. Uh, one of them shattered the glass. Mark Bartra is a Borussia Dortmund player who was injured in it and they had to cancel uh, the game last night against Monaco. I mean, that's a worrying issue that all uh, major games face in security. Mm -hmm. But over and above that, I think UEFA were right to reschedule the match, but it just shows you the spirit of fans. Some of the social media, I, I think, was tremendous with supporters of Borussia Dortmund just saying to any Monaco fan, if you cannot find anywhere to stay, you know, they'll put you up in their houses. I just think that's absolutely fantastic. Great pictures of Monaco fans staying in uh, German houses up and down the, the, the city. I mean, that's the spirit of football. Yeah, and uh, the Champions League just brings all that out and uh, it's tremendous and uh, I mean, what more can you say? It's just so friendly and uh, I mean, I think UEFA and FIFA keep preaching that to everybody, you know, it's a friendly cup, you know, and respect and all that, it goes with it and they've just taken it, taken it on a level higher. Yeah, uh, have you been in the Westfalen Stadium before? No, I haven't. No, you, I haven't. you should get it on your bucket list, it's, it's up there, you know, when you mm -hmm. think of the great atmosphere of Tyne Castle, it's, it's there. Um, what's your, what is a, a stadium that you've enjoyed, that you've been at, Stephen? Um, obviously the big two you play at Celtic Rangers, but I think from noise levels, the opening day last year against Rangers, the championship, and it was the first season championship, that was just a surreal occasion, just, just the amount of fans there and just the, you couldn't really hear yourself think so that was one of the ones that kind of blew me away it just kind of opened my eyes to see it to show that that's the kind of level I wanted to be at playing at like stadiums like that throughout your career and that yeah, was a real eye-opener. Yeah I'm going to talk about that special goal of yours from a couple of seasons back as well not because you've told me to but just because I thought it was worthy of a mention. Um, we're on the Champions League mode here Ruffy, Juventus um, <clears throat> again, <laughs> I wouldn't like to tempt fate with it, but I, I don't see Barcelona. I don't see Barcelona scoring four goals against them. I don't know about you after last night's drubbing. Well, it, it depends uh, what officials of Barcelona uh, have asked for. No, really, no, did no, no, last, the last round was scandalous, <laughs> particularly with Suarez. But uh, no, I wouldn't put anything by. I mean, we were in the stadium with Celtic, and uh, once they go on a run, you know they're unstoppable. But uh, if there's a team you don't want to you know, have to score goals against it, be Juventus. You know, Italians are notorious for spoiling tactics and seeing out games quite comfortably, so they've got a three goal advantage. So, I think it would be a good boy, it would be great to watch. I yeah. mean, if Barcelona to get a goal early on. Can we get a wee side bet on? Do you want, do you want to have one? Because obviously, the reason why he's in a bad mood is because he tipped PSG to win the Champions League. <laughs> I was texting him just as soon as the seventh one went in. Um, <laughs> Well, if I go for that again, I mean, I know Dembele's sitting on, what, 32, so I could yeah. be on a double whammy here, yeah, so you could get... um, I'm, 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 I'm going to wait for Dembele before I get, get, get into deep trouble. Yeah, OK. Um, um, Dembele's still got a few games to go, but I've got him on 32 and tipped him to score 40, Stephen. Give us your thoughts. Is my bet looking good or is it shaky? Uh, I'd say it's looking good. Um, still a few games left, and I, there's just there enough on he's been on. It's been unreal, um, but I, I, I'd say maybe going past that, if Celtic starts on a few goals, then there's no stopping them. 
Yeah, um, there's a couple of other things that uh, have been dominating some of the headlines today as well. It, it never stops with the, you know people being linked with Dembele, Arsenal the latest with him and Tierney. There's absolutely no doubt, Ruffy, that scouts are watching mm -hmm. uh, these players non-stop at the moment. Yeah, they are. You know, and the the, the Dembele one in particular. You know, everybody keep saying, why would you go to a club if you're not going to get a regular game? But he will believe that he's good enough to go into a, a big club and score goals. He just needs to get the chance. But uh, the young boy Tierney, oh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be lots of clubs would love a, a young player like that, that they can I mean, get at a reasonable price. And uh, we've saw the boy Robertson at Hull, how much he's come on. And uh, I think Tierney will be heading in the same direction. Yeah, who would, you, who would get your vote, Stephen, in the Premiership if you cast it for player of the year? Uh, that was a hard one. I, I was actually talking to Stephen McGinn about that yesterday. Um, I think it would have to be a Celtic player and his vote was Scott Sinclair, but mine was Stuart Armstrong. Just the way he's kicked on, the way Brendan Rodgers has kind of brought out him and obviously getting his first Scotland cap as well. So I think my vote would be Stuart Armstrong, yeah. Yeah, um, I've got to ask you about this, Ruffy, which is a story that we highlighted there in the, the newspapers. Michael O'Halloran. Um, I get the feeling that his days might be numbered at Rangers now because he hasn't been getting a regular no. game. He failed to show up for a game. There's whether there's a, a you know a reasonable excuse we don't know, yeah. um, but I think he, he'll be looking to pastures new in the summer anyway out of Rangers. Yeah, you, you've touched on it there. We 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 don't know where the reason. We haven't seen a reason. If it is the case that he's saying to himself, well, I'm not going to go and play for the under twenties, then he will be out the door. You know, there are bigger players than him. I've had to go in and, and, and go through that scenario but uh, it might be another reason we, we don't really know but again he, he, he's not done himself any favours by not turning up because the manager at this moment in time will be actually looking at players and actively know which ones he's going to keep a hold of and which ones he's going to let go. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Stephen, if you've ever been involved in you know, a game where you were potentially fighting with your, your teammates, but I'm sure that goes on in training and everything anyway, but I'm, gl I'm glad that Danny Swanson and um, Richard Foster are, are back in the fold and available for this weekend mm. for St Johnson against Aberdeen. Yeah, I mean, that's what footballers are like, you know, the spur of the moment thing, things happen, people say things, you, reaction, we saw it like managers are. Uh, when the pressure's on and, and I'm glad and, and St Johnson is a club that would have got them together they, they've acted you know, very sharply and, and punished them and I'm sure the, the two players will be glad that it's not dragged on that they can now focus on the games coming up Yeah, just when I mentioned that was there a player sticking in your mind Stephen that you thought I can remember having a, a set two with D mm -hmm. To be fair, I'm, that's not the type of player I am. I've never really done that. But my you dad never know. No, no. Uh, you never know what's going to get thrown about in their uh, training. Do, do. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bad man, Alan Duff. You're a bad man. OK. Um, from that story to um, another one, which is uh, congratulations <coughs> to Shelley Kerr. She was unveiled today as the Scotland women's international coach. Of course, she'll start after the European Championships. Anna Signo will say farewell. <coughs> Uh, and as you can imagine, for a, for a home girl, uh, well pleased and honoured to be the Scotland manager. It's an absolute honour. It's a privilege. Um, I'm extremely proud. Um, as you can imagine, as a young kid growing up um, playing football, and especially as a young girl, um, I had dreams to represent my country. And I was really fortunate to do that. But to actually get the opportunity to lead the women's national team, it's a dream come true for me. Yep, good appointment. She's got a good CV, Ruffy. Yeah, she certainly has, and uh, it is a great appointment. I mean, the, the women's football is on the up. You know, obviously, they've got a fantastic occasion coming up at the Euros. I'm sure she'll go along and, and grab the experience from that, and I'm sure the players will grab the experience as well, and uh, it's a super appointment. Yep, and uh, no surprise, she's got a tough uh, job in her hands trying to get us to a World Cup. Where have we heard that before? Um, but, of course, uh, she did reveal her plans today. I think in terms of football, it's competition. Um, you need competition. Um, you need competition for places in the team. Um, that in turn makes the game stronger. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier, um, it's the expectations as well. We've already reached a final, so to sustain that and then go on better in terms of the World Cup, obviously that's a different format. Um, it's only one team that um, get out of the group stages, so it's, it's much harder. So then you're maybe perhaps um, looking at the playoffs, but to sustain, absolutely sustain the success that, that we've had recently, that, that's a priority. 
Yep, we wish Shelley Kerr uh, the very best of luck here on the football show. A couple of things to finish with. Um, Ruffy, what about uh, um, Derek Lyle? He's going to get a testimonial played against a, a Rangers Legends team. I couldn't think of a, a more worthy recipient of that at Queen of the South. Yeah, I think we'd be talking about it the other day. There's not enough players stay at the, the one club now, and, and Derek certainly <laughs> has that. He's been at a lot of clubs, but uh, this particular club, he's been there a while, and he, he deserves it, and I really hope that the supporters turn out. There's so many times it happens, you know, and it's a poor attendance, but I hope he gets a good turn. Yeah, well done to David Hopkin as well. He's the uh, League One Manager of uh, the Month. And uh, here is a photograph, Ruffy. I just wonder what was going on here. Can you tell us what was happening in this uh, in this photograph? What about the jumper? I mean, it's just an absolute shocker. <laughs> um, yeah, it, was, it was just a modelling job. You know that. What uh, for you or for, for the lady in question? No, I wonder. No, just. The, the <laughs> yeah, on that note, no, don't even explain it. Don't explain it. What a way, what a way. On that note, for legal reasons, thanks to Stevie Mallon. Good night. <laughs>